Hey everybody, welcome back, it's Jordan here. Today we're gonna be moving the Winter Village and discussing the new plan for this display right here. It is going to be awesome. I'm super excited that I was able to create the Winter Village for 2022, but it no longer matches the vibe because the 2022 holiday season has come and gone way too fast in my opinion. But hey, this Winter Village will be back in 2023 and I hope we can make it even better by modularizing some of these buildings. And it's also still gonna be on display here in the Lego room just over there underneath the Lego city. Yeah, so today in this video, we're gonna move the Winter Village and I'm also gonna to talk to you about the new plan that I have. It is an awesome custom project that I am super excited about and I hope to get the basic layout going for that new custom project. So let's get started by moving the Winter Village. Really happy that I decided to build this diorama on mill plates because I can just pick up these massive chunks and carry it away. For example, this one right here with the ski slope and the Christmas tree and the skating rink is two 48 by 48 base plates, all one solid mill plate. And you saw how solid it was. I was able just to carry it away, no problem. This one here with the Elf Clubhouse, Santa's workshop, and the sleigh flying above is one 48 by 48 plate. And both of those plates had the cliff edge on the back there that did a really great job of hiding that raised platform. The next thing that I had to do is extract the two side panels that covered up the side of the raised platform. And they're just two cliff edges. In addition to those two cliff edge panels, there was also the cave that had more rock backdrop, the ice, and also the Star Wars Wampa. Once those were extracted, it's time to move the big portion on the back here. I really wasn't sure how I was gonna move this, if I was gonna just pick up all the mills plates or if I was gonna remove all the buildings. They're sort of together because of the Christmas lights, the road panels, the train track, and just the different sets. But it is on this really solid raised platform. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna pick up this entire raised platform and move it it's like that. It's sort of risky, but luckily for me, there was no casualties and it moved pretty easily. Then just a little bit of cleanup, pick up some of the spare pieces and give it a quick vacuum. So the Winter Village is now positioned underneath the Lego city right there. Hey, it actually looks pretty good. You know what? There is an additional base plate of space down here. I decided to push it to the back there just because there's that raised platform. And I think it's better to have the space up front there. Maybe I can lay some white base plates down and expand the scene down here. Could potentially do that, expand the Winter Village a bit. But then when I go to put it back on the other surface next year, it wouldn't really make sense. But that's not a bad little uh, spot for it there because you can actually see it now when you look underneath the table, specifically when the lights are on. Over there is uh, a little bit of a horde right now. There's a bunch of minifigures and miscellaneous builds and also the uh, burrow. Eventually I have a plan to clean that up as well. Uh, so I'm excited about that. But you can see this pretty much consumes half of the platform down here. So it's a pretty big surface that we have to work with over there. And the next thing that we got to do is start constructing the new diorama. And it's going to be completely custom and I'm really excited about it. This surface right here is actually two of the IKEA Besta cabinets. And it's a pretty big surface. It's four and a half base plates wide by three base plates deep. It's sort of an awkward size because it's four and a half wide rather than four wide or five wide. I wish this space was a little bit bigger. Actually, rather than having a bigger space here, I just wish I had a larger city because the mock that we're gonna create would actually be really cool in the city. But once we actually start constructing it, it's gonna make sense to you. So the first thing I always wanna do is just cover my surface with base plates. I've used two of the 48 by 48 gray base plates, which are actually one and a half base plates. So when you put two of them together, it's actually three base plates, which is the depth of the table, so that makes sense. And then I've used nine of the green base plates to fill the remaining space, and then I tacked all of those together just using some basic two by two plate. So there we have our open canvas, everybody. Now keep in mind, I am gonna mills plate this just like I did with the Winter Village. So the base plate color doesn't really matter. It's more so the orientation just to make sure that we can create these base plates or the mills plates the right size so that they're easy to extract and their own separate entities. The colors of these, actually one or two of them might change because there will be some water involved in this new mock. 
So I might want to replace some of those green base plates with blue. So I know these are going to be giant Mills plates. In fact, there's going to be four of them. The first thing that I want to do when I construct these Mills plates is give it a light gray border. That's why I dumped all my gray bricks onto the surface there. And I put those bricks going around the border. Just because when you look at it, you don't want to see the color. Also, in addition to the light gray bricks going around the border, I've got to create a border of light gray plate as well. For the interior, it doesn't really matter any color of 2x2 two two brick and then any color of plate going on top because this mock here is going to be completely tiled off. There is not going to be a whole lot of studs. Everything is going to be tiled off and that is going to cover all of those random colored plates. You can see I'm laying a bunch of purple on top of those red bricks there and then I've got my light gray plate to do the border just so once again we don't see those purple plates and those random colored bricks when we're looking at the mock from afar. So the first structure is going to be where the purple plates are and then we're going to have another sort of structure where the light blue plates are. These mills plates are massive. There are three giant mills plates. You can see the purple one, the blue one, and then the one on the right on those two 48 by 48 plates that I haven't started constructing yet. I'm trying to color coordinate it as best I can, but sometimes you run out of pieces and you just can't do it the exact way that you want to do it. This thing here, I'm going to use any color of a 4x4 plate to fill it all in. Now I've got this foundation going here and I think it's going well, but I only made it one brick tall. That's one brick off the base plate. I'm starting to think that maybe I should have made it two bricks, but I'm not 100% sold on that idea and I can always change it in the future. Making some pretty good progress down here. You know what, I actually thought of this idea last night and here we are the next day starting to execute my plan, which you still have no idea what that is. But check it out, uh, we've got one large mills plate right here, another one here, solid units, and then the last one over there, that multicolored thing. What the heck is this going to be? <laughs> it's actually something that uh, I've been wanting to do for a very long time and actually attempted to do once upon a time, but I never completed that project. And here I am multiple years later looking to do it bigger and even better. Okay, so now that we've got our uh, mills plates made there and everything's looking pretty good, I think I'm just going to add uh, some tile to this plate here. I'm finally going to use some of these tan ingot tiles. And you know what? I found these on the pad wall not too long ago along with these snot bricks. So as I tile the uh, area here, I'm able to extract all those snot bricks and do a little bit of sorting as well. You're probably wondering why I'm not working on the zoo. I plan on using these tiles in the zoo as well. I'm not working on that just because it's a little bit hard to reach right now. And I'm really excited about this project and wanted to get it started. So after I uh, got all that done, I had to make some modifications to the mills plate. I actually connected the two mills plates to make them one giant mills plate. I also had to remove all of the pieces from these blue base plates here because they're the only blue base plates that I had and I wanted those base plates in the front of the camera there to be blue. Have you figured out what the new diorama is going to be yet? Well, I'm going to tell you right now. It is a luxury island that will be home to a lot of speed champion cars, 100% custom. And this is gonna be my 2023 passion project. And right back here, there's gonna be a massive garage on the purple plate. Now I ended up combining those two plates there because I found out that the garage actually has to be larger than I originally anticipated because the speed champion vehicles are pretty big. So why don't we take the time to put some of the speed champion vehicles where they will be in this luxury car garage. Now the Speed Champion vehicles, they started out pretty narrow, only about six studs wide, but the ones that came out over the last few years are actually eight plus studs wide. So they're fairly large. That's why this garage has to be huge in order for it to accommodate a large selection of Speed Champions. So it looks like this garage is gonna be able to fit about nine Speed Champions, but it really depends on what style of vehicle I decide to put in there because I don't know if I want to do a combination of the older ones which are six studs wide or the newer ones which are obviously a lot larger. But my theory is the vehicles are going to be able to pull in on the driveway here, turn, and then back into their stall. So the garage is going to span this entire base plate. 
It'll accommodate all of these vehicles and it's going to be an interesting shape. It's going to bow outward like that there. So essentially this is the outline of the garage and this is the driveway that leads up to a large sliding door right here and another large sliding door right there which will slide in just like that there and allow you to enter the garage from either side. Now you'll see that the driveway goes up to here. Well that's because right here there's going to be a custom dock and then a custom yacht and this is where you can offload vehicles and bring them into the Speed Champion garage. On top of the garage is going to be a helicopter pad. Now do you guys remember back in the day when I made my own private island and I had a giant Speed Champions garage. So you can see this garage here, it's all right. It's got the helicopter pad. It's got just those standard garage door elements. And since building this garage, which I think actually looks pretty good, my skills as a builder have improved and also my parts inventory as well. So I think we're going to be able to build something even better than this one here. I've given it quite a bit of thought, but I'm still in the research and development phase of this project here. I know for sure there has to be some sort of dock and every private island needs an epic yacht. I'm thinking there's going to be some sort of yacht that can pull up here and it has a car park on it, almost like a ferry style thing. And the vehicles can be offloaded and brought to the garage. Now I'm taking a look at these uh, vehicles here and the newer ones are pretty big. Like it would look better just to have the smaller ones in there. However, like the Countach is awesome. This Ferrari over here is amazing. Do I really not want to include those in my garage? I don't know. And of course, uh, I'm gonna be tiling off this entire island. There's still a lot of work that has to go into this, clearly. That's not a garage yet. Uh, but yeah, there's gonna be all tiled off in here. I'm thinking white because I accidentally ordered all of those white tiles. Uh, there's gonna be big glass doors there. Uh, color combination, I'm thinking white and black uh, because in addition to the garage, there's also going to be a mansion over here on this very, very colorful plate. But I think white and black is going to be a good color scheme because I have a lot of white and black in my inventory and then my accent color is probably going to be reddish brown. Sort of has a modern vibe. I did Google image modern uh, mansions and that's sort of the colors they were going with and I was like oh that's good because I have a lot of those in my inventory. So back to the garage over here we've got a lot of open space so I'm thinking of landscaping all of this available space here right and then there's gonna have to be some sort of entrance to our mansion which will be on this plate. There's probably going to be some sort of sidewalk here with maybe a green strip of grass there. And down here, there's a lot of water, right? Because the boat is only going to take up this much space and the dock here. So I'm thinking we're going to be able to create some sort of beach, maybe like this, taper over here and have a little bit more water here. And then you can come out in the mansion and sort of end up on the beach. The mansion, there are unlimited things that we can do inside of it. Of course, it's going to have all the standard boring stuff, things like a bedroom, multiple of them, bathroom, kitchen, all that stuff, all the boring stuff. But I don't want to think too much about the boring things like bathrooms and bedrooms and kitchens and all the normal things that you'd have in normal houses. What could be put inside our mansion to make it unique? Well, I'm thinking a vault full of cash and gold. I think a mansion needs that, right? <laughs> also, uh, probably a games room with like a bowling lane. Also, pool table and arcade games, Xboxes and TVs and all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, outside, there's for sure going to be an infinity pool with some loungers where you can just lounge in and soak in the rays. Probably some uh, outdoor stuff, maybe like a rock climbing wall, potentially a putting green, pretty much anything. I think it's going to be two, maybe even three stories. And if I really wanted to, if I wanted to fit more speed champions inside this like mansion, I could build these new ones here, of course, right? James Bond, Aston Martin, and Dom's Dodge Charger, and take any of the other ones from my selection here, and we could actually extend this garage so it's under here as well. And then the mansion could be on top, curving like that. Be like an interesting shape. There'd be balconies coming off here, more water down there. 
have a really detailed roof and I want this to look very modern. And then of course, come out of the mansion on top of the roof, there's a helipad and there's multiple different ways to get down to the garage that maybe curves underneath the mansion. I just want to make this look like really cool, like almost like Tony Stark vibes. You know what I mean? Like I want a really cool, modern Malibu mansion. And I think that would just be so cool and a lot of fun to build. That's what I'm hoping here. You know, just like a good passion project for 2023, something that accommodates the speed champions and looks amazing and just like gives us some storage for some epic Lego sets and is just a complete custom project. I'm really excited to see what I can cook up here with like the custom landscaping and the modern look of this mansion. It's something that I've always wanted to do. And finally this year, I'm going to do it. Pretty exciting stuff. Everybody, that's my idea for the new diorama. An epic private island with a mansion and a Speed Champions garage. Let me know what you think of it by commenting below. And please remember to like and subscribe. Farewell.